Universal Studios. We're going to do a, little, we've got a packed day today, basically. So we're going to watch a step. So basically, we're here at Universal Studios. We're going to spend about an hour, an hour and a half here, and then we're going to do a hotel resort tour. And also, <laughs> we've just uh, we've just shelled out on some uh, unlimited express passes for Halloween Horror Nights tonight. We were expected to pay a lot more, to be fair, for a Friday night. So we spent four hundred and twenty dollars after tax for two unlimited express passes. Yes, yeah, so they sold out the standard one where you can go on each thing, sorry, you can go through each house once and on each ride once. But this means we can, basically we have the freedom to go through the same house three times if we really wanted to. Yeah, um, we would never usually buy something like this, but we've actually spent a lot less than we were expected to this holiday. Um, so and it's a lot busier here. And it's so busy at Halloween Horror Night. So we've got, you know, just treat yourself. Treat yourself. Yeah, so this is going to be a jam-packed day. So we're just walking up to the tribute store now, just looking at some of the big floats. By daylight, you can see a few more of the details. There's the Palace Arcade as well. We've got some, uh, we've got some prizes to be redeemed from there when oh, we yeah. went a bit crazy when it was raining during hot night. <laughs> I forgot about that. Get some pumpkins. Yeah, so yeah, we're on our way to the tribute store in search of that infamous t-shirt that I can't seem to get hold of. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the food it's the food offerings at HHN, so it's got like, come get your pizza fries here, come get your twisted taters here, we'll show you when we get in, because they do have some in stock, unfortunately, they're all in the wrong size. Fingers crossed they've got a delivery. The judges booth. Noticing some of the orange is getting faded by the Florida sun. Okay, let's go in. This was one of the old facades from another year. Yeah, so the first room is like a traditional Halloween sign room. Really cool. Very cool. Maybe, maybe not traditional Halloween, but pumpkin room. Yeah, pumpkin room. I love this. Featuring Lil Boo. Into the next room. This feels, feels more based on the deadly unrest. Scare zone. Oh, graveyard Deadly Unrest, guys. It's a favourite scare I keep saying it, but it's a favourite scare zone. Yeah, it's so good, you gotta go through it. I love how you can see how black light, um, what do they call it? Reactive. Reactive, the t shirts are. Thoughts on this? I like how you can see the. Uh, the different characters in his videos, oh, yeah. like reflected in the eyes, but I don't know. I'm not a massive fan. I really wanted a weekend shirt, but I, yeah, I don't. I can't see myself wearing. I feel like they could have done better. Halloween stuff. Ian's got this one. Oh my gosh, that actually just made me jump. Let's see if it does it again. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are here are really fun as well. Oh yeah, these are cool. Some ghosts. <laughs> got a coffin. Have a picture with a coffin if you want. Demonstrate. Spooky. <laughs> so on this wall, you can basically pay for the privilege of being in this kind of corridor between the two, uh, between two of the rooms. So you, can, you know, here's Expedition Free Park here for a while. Here's Jack and Super Fused. Got another look. Oh, here's Rich Flex. Oh yeah, I didn't know it. Yeah. Um, I believe Kitra, ah, here we go. Kitra from our new Ordinary Adventures is there as well. Not so often have Follow Me at Your Own Risk. Um, a lot of the YouTubers have that as their tagline. I'm not sure if it's like a. Do you get to choose that one? I'm not sure if it's a pre selected tagline yeah. or like a list of options or yeah. you can choose your you own. You get to be in this mausoleum, that's what it is the Hollow Hill Cemetery Mausoleum. There are still spaces available if you, at, at this point. Okay, so this room feels a lot more. Witchy, could you say? Yeah. yeah. So we've got a we've got a skeleton like stirring a uh, witch's brew there, which is full and a couple of cages where birds are kept. The birds associated with witches. What's this guy up here? What's he? Is he like a? What is that? Cages of the people. Is it a 
person in there? Oh, they're um, they're from Harry Potter. Pixies. Oh. I think they're pixies. Dead pixies. Fun. <laughs> Yeah, you've got some more like screen interactive based stuff here, not interactive, but you've got some more screen based theme in here as well, which is fun. And then we come out into the traditional Halloween kind of section of the tribute store. You can see the, the music's all whimsical and fun. Yeah, it's got a skeleton. Oh yeah? Going up a skeleton going up a ladder here. Yeah. There's another one showing it there as well, I'm not sure if you can see from the uh, frosted glass. Same person. <laughs> I wish I was still this That too. is a cool mask. Oh, here we go. Alright, it's not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good. Guys, <laughs> it's not There's the sizes. Extra small. We're going to have to order them at home. We're going to order them. 90 pounds shipping. Thanks, guys. Fine. Oh, it'll all work out. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't find what we were after there, but I love walking through the tribute store. Yeah, it's got a great theme and each room's different. I do love it. Yeah, foiled again. <laughs> uh, I don't know what we're going to do next. It sounds like Marilyn and the Diamond Bellas might be next door to us, but I think we might try and do a ride. Yeah, that's okay. Also, does anyone feel themselves like picking up an American twang as they're over here for <laughs> longer and longer? Like, I think we're, we're especially bad for this. Yeah, like, I keep saying things. Whenever we're at, like, whenever we're at a till, I was literally just about to say cash register. Whenever we're at a till. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. No, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> That's why you're good. I'm going to use that all the time now. Yeah. No, no, you're good. <laughs> I don't know. I just found ourselves picking it up more and more. Yeah. So we've got this booth just outside uh, Grimald Place, which sells a lot of jacket potatoes and a lot of hot dogs. Personally, I couldn't imagine anything worse than walking around Florida in 35 <laughs> degrees with a piping hot jacket potato <laughs> in hand. Like, they're not the easiest to eat. They're not. They're not, it's, they're not the easiest to eat. No, it, 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 it's just insanity to me. Yeah. I, I just think like the, prop, the proper British way. Oh, I think that's what people think. Jacket potatoes and kettle chips and then you're fully British. That's all we eat. And a cup of tea. Yeah. Sometimes you might have a cup of tea with the kettle chips as well if you're yeah. feeling... Yeah, super offensive. If you're feeling adventurous. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's just crazy. <laughs> Oh yeah, that looks awesome. We like looking out over to the Simpsons land from London, so it makes sense that this is a great view as well. Okay, so we're gonna head into the horror makeup show. Ah, quote from Bella that goes in here. The role seemed to demand that I keep myself worked up to fever pitch, so I took on the actual attributes of the horrible vampire Dracula. We have got various little um, pictures and snippets and props from all of the various Universal Monsters movies from back in the day, which is just awesome. Over here we've got various posters from some of the Universal Monsters films from days past. There's actually a list of Universal Monsters films here, so Phantom of the Opera is... Phantom of the Opera is 1925. Just left of these posters is some uh, some examples of Universal Studios' newer uh, horror films. Seems hard to be an actor back in the day, so during, during the filming of Bride of Frankenstein, Boris Karloff, who plays Frankenstein, uh, sweated 20 pounds labouring in the hot costume and makeup. Early during filming, he slipped and fell, breaking his leg. The metal struts used to stiffen his leg actually helped him keep the bones in place before they could be properly set. So we filmed with the broken leg. Wow. Anyone who's watched The Thing will recognize this prop set piece. The credited writer of They Live, which is another fantastic film, uh, is a reference to a, one of H.P. Lovecraft's uh, books. This is the, the actress who plays the mummy, and you can see like her makeup is extremely intricate with all the hieroglyphics and stuff like that, it must have taken absolutely ages. And here's her with some of the, uh, you know, some of the costume effects on her as well. It's amazing, all practical. The face of the Goblin Blix, which is this guy here, 
uh, was designed after that of Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Is it Keith Richards who plays Jack Sparrow's dad as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a legal disclaimer in the closing credits of American Werewolf in London. Any resemblance to any persons living dead or undead is coincidental. <laughs> oh look, here's a bust of the Grinch. Ha! Huh. That's so fun. I mean, I highly recommend, if you're going to do the horror makeup show, I highly recommend getting here like 20 minutes early because if you're a fan of horror, there's so much interesting thing, there's so many interesting things in here. The makeup effects for the transformation in American Werewolf in London won the uh, makeup artist. Just so many Oscars. This is amazing. And here's one of the uh, here's one of the raptors here as well. Of course. I'm sorry this room wouldn't be complete without the Halloween Horror Night section. We've got uh, Jack the Clown here and the caretaker. Each Halloween Horror Night starts with a theme master of ceremonies. Displayed here are just a few of the terrifying characters that you can encounter. Yeah, it's just amazing. There have been so many icons over the years. Uh, I believe uh, Expedition Theme Park has a fantastic video on the history of Halloween Horror Nights, so highly recommend watching that if you can find it. Also, I'm not sure how I missed this massive sarcophagus here whilst uh, covering the movie session. This is so cool. And if you uh, get a little bit closer, as well, you can see that it's embroidered with actual hieroglyphics as well. I'm not sure if these actually translate to anything meaningful, but if it did, that'd be cool. Ah, here we go. So this was in Dead Coconut Club yesterday, and we were wondering what it was from. And it turns out it's actually from... It came from outer space, and for these alien designs, uh, there were two submitted and they were rejected and later used as the mutant in Universal's The Island Earth. Wait. So was this from The Island Earth or it came from outer space? The, this Island Earth. Ah, cool. This Island Earth. So this is from This Island Earth, not from it came from outer space. Who does this remind you of? This, remi this, this guy reminds me of someone. Robin Williams. Robin Williams, yes. Yeah. So for the shower scene in Psycho, they used chocolate syrup because when they were basically filming with fake blood, it came up grey, but they found when they were, because they used it all in black and white, but when they used chocolate syrup, then it turned up the right kind of texture and colours for it. There's a quote up here from Alfred Hitchcock which says, always make the audience suffer as much as possible. And I think he uh, followed that advice for his actors as well. And you can actually see here, just outside the Horror Makeup Show, there's a little reference to uh, Dead Coconut Club, which is a Halloween Horror Nights overlay of the uh, Red Coconut Club in Universal Seawalk. Yeah, I would never have spotted this if it didn't come up here. Obviously. <laughs> Captain Obvious there after the rescue. Okay, so we've just come into the film vault, which is facing Transformers. Uh, we think this is one of the better uh, places to get some merchandise, especially some of the uh, Steven Spielberg Universal movies. Here's a Jaws fanny pack here. This is amazing. Uh, what else have we got? Shirt. Look at her face. <laughs> wow. Look at this Jaws shirt. This is amazing. Handing up and down. Kong versus Skull Crawler. Like, what would you call these figurines, I suppose? Jaws. Uh, $735. Oof. Terminator sign bus for $2,300, that's insane. You can see Arnie's uh, signature just on his chest there, of course, that's where it is. This is a great shirt. Mm. Oh, who would buy a shirt like this? Who would buy this? <laughs> Me. Also, uh, quick note on Back to the Future. Um, if you're in the park at night, the DeLorean looks so much cooler at night. So that's yeah, it lights up. Yeah, so this is uh, Al Pacino signed Godfather Fedora. And it is $1,625. Oof, oof, oof. We've got some paintings up here as well. Look, here's a signed painting of Marty from Back to the Future playing the guitar. That's $2,100. That's kind of reasonable. $85 for this Blues Brothers, uh, like a frame with a cool photo in it, I suppose. Lewis just pointed out that these little black squares here are actually bits of original film from the uh, from the movie. Very cool. Very good. So we're just going to head into King's Cross now to catch the Hogwarts Express. Let's see if it feels like a British train station. Looking at the departure board, obviously one's cancelled. Yeah, we've got one cancelled and two delayed on the other side as well. <laughs> Sometimes the immersion is just, it's just too much. Here's the poster from one of the films when 
And I was like, Gandalf, when Dumbledore <laughs> appears. Best crossover ever. <laughs> who'd, win, who'd win between Gandalf and Dumbledore? Comments down below. Look at all this luggage. Approaching, you can just see the tops of some of the buildings just through the trees there. It is a nice reveal. You can hear Hagrid through the bushes. Please respect the spell limits. I've never, I've never actually looked to see what that says in the box, but yeah, please respect no, me neither. And here we are. <laughs> Another view of the Hogwarts Express. Okay, so we're just gonna head into the Hogshead Pub now. So basically, the drink we want is the Deathly Hallows, and JK Rowling put an end to buying the Deathly Hallows. But if you, but if you ask for a triple layer beer with Hogshead Brew, Guinness, and Strongbow, it's the same thing. So we're gonna try now. So these are our Deathly Hallows triple layered beer. I've seen two layers. I've seen two layers. I think two of them may have blended together, yeah. the lager and the cider. But I can definitely make out the Guinness. Let's give them a try. Yes, we go. Sounded like a question. <laughs> That is so surprisingly good. Is it? Does yeah. it not just taste like Guinness? Does it all mix together? Yeah, that's, that's really good. Cool. Give this a go. go. See, I picked this one because it had less Guinness at the top. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That really works, right? Yeah, so just you can get a hint of that top bit and the other layers. So yeah, that apple fruity Guinness, is that accurate? I feel like it's a fruity Guinness. I mean, that works because a lot of people get um, Guinness and Black, which is with black currant in it. Uh, so yeah. it works, get one of these. All right, so Laura's been trying to get this all holiday and it's finally in stock. It's the ginger new. Look Laura. how cute it is. So it's a cookie, right? Yeah, a, a, like a ginger cookie. All right, so we're in uh, Ireland's Trading Company at the moment, the main gift shop in Islands of Adventure, and we're going for a personalized uh, Harry Potter house shirt. Uh, they basically give you this slip which you can fill out. There's some uh, personal details above this which I obviously won't include but basically you just fill out your details. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this up to the till in Trading Company so the shop we're currently in now and then in three hours time we're going to pick it up at City Walk. They do say it's a three hour turnaround time so don't place an order just before the park closes otherwise they'll basically just tell you no. Okay, so we're just headed out of Islands of Adventure. We're gonna pick up our shirt at City Walk in three hours time. But in the meantime, uh, we're gonna do something quite fun. Yeah, so something we've not done before, we're gonna do a bit of a crawl around the preferred and premium hotels on Universal. So we're gonna get a drink at each, and maybe a little bite to eat as well. Yeah, we're gonna catch some of the theming in there as well. And I mean, who knows what's gonna be going on while we're there. It should be fun. So we're just gonna get on the boat to Portofino Bay now. I mean, I've never been to Italy, so I can't speak to the theming, but I feel like this is pretty bang on. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it in movies and stuff. Yeah, this looks 
just looks brilliant. You've even got like little boats just like floating in the dock here. Um, in the bay, I should say. Here's Baiso Beach A restaurant. Who knows how it's pronounced, but um, yeah, this is. We've got some, uh, yeah, we've got some pretty pretty expensive prices here. I mean, this is one. This is the resort on Virgin Holidays' website. It's only this and Four Seasons which gets uh, Virgin Holidays' top rating in all of Orlando. So that might tell you something about how good this place is. It looks incredible. It really does. It's absolutely beautiful. So do you think this is where we're going to head into then? Yeah, I think we're going to end up going to the Thirsty Fish Bar, which is just here on the corner. Okay, so it's currently 12.47 and the Thirsty Fish Bar is closed. So we're going to try and go somewhere else for our crawl. Yeah. Okay, so here's a map basically detailing everything. We've just got off the uh, boat now and we've just walked down that side of the bay. Um, we're going to look to see if there are any more bars that we can go to. This bar American like here. I'm, 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 just, I'm, looking at the same, I'm looking at the same thing on a different, on a different <laughs> layout. Laura po poking her head around here, <laughs> chiming <really> in. <laughs> we've got the pool bar and grill here. We've also got this bar American. We'll, ch we'll check to see if this I is open like, as well. Sorry. <laughs> go on, go on. What are you saying? I, say, you I saying? feel like that's a good idea. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so we're here at the uh, poolside bar, basically. Um, they do let you in here if you're not a Port of Final Bay guest. Basically, basically, you told them, like, how did we get here? Because we're from Bay guest. And we said, oh, just let the attendant know, we'll let you in. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's good to know. We were, looking for, oh, we were looking for a long time for a place called Bar American. We couldn't find it anywhere, but it turns out it's just like the lounge area in the hotel lobby. It's not bar. <laughs> So that was fun. Uh, but yeah, we've got some drinks here. We've got a, uh, the spicy one, which is basically a jalapeno margarita. And we've got the Portofino Bay Punch. We didn't tell you we were ordering food, but we just got some, well, I got some tendies, and I swapped it out for some sweet potato fries instead of just the normal fries. Look how much food I have. I was only meant to get a snack. Look at this. We've got Turkey Club. Here it is. Here's some fries. I've been eating them whilst Laura's been filming. They're incredible. Let's talk him. Sorry about One Direction in the background, but I just really needed to show. This is one chicken tender. <laughs> Look at it. It's crazy. Okay, so for a portrait of tenders and two cocktails and the turkey club, uh, total is 84.66, and that is with an 18% surface charge included. Okay, so first hotel down. We've had, decided to get some food from there as well, just because uh, we've not eaten anything today, basically. Yeah, off to Hard Rock Hotel now. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long to walk there. We're going to take the garden walkway. Hopefully, we can find a bar with some actual AC this time, because we are dying. <laughs> okay, so we're just on the garden walk here, and we are now at Hard Rock Hotel which is just here, we've got a little sign saying, just follow the path up to the right. We'll say one of the advantages of uh, getting the water taxi to uh, the city walk is that you get to do security here instead of at city walk, so you get through a lot quicker. Here we go, this is the reveal behind the bush. Here is Hard Rock Hotel. It looks awesome. So we just walked up these stairs and there's a sign for Abbey Road here. Just walking in, look at this. There's a leaf insect here. Wow. Look at that! That is awesome! Oh, that's made my day, that has. Walked the wrong way, so we're going back now. And there's a leaf insect again. Look at him, he's a leaf! So we're just outside the front of the lobby at Hard Rock now, and we've got a, a guitar fountain here, which is really cool. We've seen this on videos, but it looks awesome in uh, real life. Okay, so we're just entering the lobby here, and I must say, it looks outstanding. We've got lots of buses, of different... Uh, there's Taylor Swift there. I will admit, I don't know who the other two are. Um, Laura would know though, so maybe she can tell you in a second. Um, who's this guy on the right? Is it Jim Morrison? From Jim. The oh yeah, and that's Taylor Swift, and you know the guy on the left? John Lennon, thank you. I know nothing Elvis. about music. Got Elvis over here, and is that Michael Jackson? Oh, Bruno Mars. Is <laughs> that Michael Jackson over here, ladies and gentlemen? This uh, saxophone chandelier is amazing, and we've got like a, uh, an angelic. This is Jimi Hendrix, yeah. This is really cool. This is a, a top of spiral staircase. I know. Very grand. Okay, so here's some of the selections that you can get from the kitchen. Um, again, looks like uh, quite premium prices here. Uh, there you go, lobster mac and cheese, $30 for example. Yeah, but we'll hopefully 
We've only seen the fella bar so far, so hopefully we're gonna see if we can get a drink in the kitchen. I, but I, I doubt it, you know, but we'll see. If you can't get a drink here, we're basically just gonna chop over the loss and recommend that you start this from 5 pm onwards. Yeah, that's when all the main bars at Universal open. So we're just gonna head into the kitchen restaurant now just to see if we can grab a drink at the bar. Dane's got a gin and coke, and I've got the hard curry cocktail. Okay, a couple of things. Um, I don't usually order a gin and coke. I actually said JD and coke, she got it wrong, but I am too much of a pushover to I'd say otherwise, to be honest. Yeah, it's actually alright, you know. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah. I preferred mine. Yeah, well, I preferred yours as well. Uh, and another thing, if you're gonna do this hotel crawl, definitely come at 5 o'clock because we actually got served by the person uh, working in front of the house there. Like, it wasn't meant to be open, but they were kind enough to let us set up the bar. We're gonna get a taxi back to Cabana Bay now and chalk this one up as a loss. We're just queuing up to get into the cowfish now. Don't think it was too long. We're about 10 minutes early. So we're just heading in now. Nice view out of the window. Dane's just building his fish now. Just out of the bar. So this is our fish. I'm going to send him to the aquarium. Yeah, go on. Off we go. Are you in here? The Ruby Panther, I think it was called. What did you know what you were I've gone for the mango. It's like a mango margarita. Yeah, cool. I'll put the names in below. I'm sure I'll be able to find them. And then we just got a couple of glasses of water as well. Just scan the QR code just to get the menu items up. And just having a look around the room at the moment. But upstairs and then upstairs again at the moment. <laughs> so our burgers have just arrived. These are so we both got them done medium. I've got mine without the bacon slaw. This is Dane's with everything on it. I'm not eating all this. That's crazy. This is insane. And they got a little pickle as well, which I will get rid of, but it is very fun. So the bill's just arrived at Cowfish. So for our two big squeal burgers, they were $20 each. So with tax, that came to $42.60. We did already get our drinks at the bar, so that's not included in this bill. They were something like $35 after tax, if I remember rightly. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll, I'll check that I paid in cash. Just noticed a few of them. Okay, so that's cowfish done and dusted. What do you think of it? So, the service to start with wasn't great, but once we got upstairs, our server himself was really good. Um, the food was okay, the pull pot was a little dry. Yeah. I'd say it was sort of just slightly above average. I'd yeah. give it about, the more I think about it, maybe like a six and a half, seven. Yeah, I mean, when Laura says the service at the start, basically we returned at quarter past seven, which was our reservation time, and then he said, Okay, we'll send you a text when your table's ready. And then, so we thought, you know, we were hoping it was gonna be ready anyway, because that's the time. But then we got a drink at a bar, and basically we, you know, our table was ready pretty quickly after about 10 minutes, to be fair. So we went to the counter at the front, which had a big queue behind it, because everyone was waiting to get a text. Oh God, this isn't very positive, is it? And then, we basically, uh, the person who was we thought was going to be showing us to our table, told basically, he, what did he do? It, it, she, she told us to go upstairs and someone would meet us there, but nobody met us there and then we were just sort of hovering yeah. around wondering what to do. Yeah, the one um, on the second floor, which was the first one, showing us to the bottom of the stairs to then go upstairs ourselves and then just hang around to be waiting to be seated by somewhere else, which took about four or five minutes. And it was so, just a bit awkward, it wasn't yeah. 100% great. So whilst our table booking was at quarter past seven, we ended up sitting down at uh, 20 minutes to eight. So yeah, not 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 fantastic. Yeah, um, it's one of them. It was all right. I wouldn't rush to go back. It's not one that I'd probably want to go to next year. I'm all right now. I've done it once. I agree with that. So the T-shirt that I was talking about earlier, I got it just picked up now. And it's personalised on the back. There you go. You get to learn my surname. <laughs> Pronounce that. <laughs> okay, welcome back. We're at Halloween Horror Nights. We're putting them ranking all these houses at the end of this video. <laughs> Number one is 